The original Destiny had a very rocky start. The game was fun for a few hours, but also was repetitive, lacked content, and variety. I doubt anyone, especially the fans of the original game, could deny that. You definitely needed to maintain engagement into the expansions to get any sort of payoff in the game, and that meant you had to spend extra money on top of the base game to get any real experience with it. Destiny 2 aims to fix a lot of those base game issues while providing content to those veteran players who did play the full Destiny content. Destiny 2 takes place one year after the events of the Destiny Rise of Iron expansion and starts off with the invasion of the Lost City. The Red Legion faction led by Emperor Dominus Gaul attacks and completely overwhelms the Guardians in the Lost City. Gaul believes that the Traveler has made a mistake giving the light to the humans and so by force he takes over the Lost City, stripping the Guardians of their powers and scattering them. The rest of the story has you play as one of these Guardians as you try to regroup with the rest of your team, regaining both powers old and new as you ready up to take back the last city. The biggest improvement with this new story is that Destiny 2 actually explains the story with some good context and actual explanation. If you played the original Destiny, you had to go play the expansions, read up on the lore online, and it was an actual chore to figure out what the hell was going on in the story, and even then it was pretty hard to decipher everything. Destiny 2 greatly improves upon this by giving some story context within the game itself both through campaign missions and side quests that open up the lore of the game and its side characters. Beautifully animated cutscenes that play along the ends of story missions give context to how your actions are affecting the enemy, bettering your understanding of the missions rather than just feeling like you're shooting down enemies or collecting an object just because the game has to make you do something. Your journey will take you to exotic new planets, meeting new side characters along the way, with my personal favorite being Failsafe, a comedic multi-personality AI who just always says the right thing to make me laugh. Stealing is wrong, usually, but the Vex are alien robot monsters. Standard moral parameters do not apply. It's not murder if it's robots. Please come visit me again. The 8 to 10 hour campaign consists of 15 story missions that'll give you a more concise ending than the original game, though it leaves the player with some unanswered questions that hint at either some sort of sequel or more than likely the upcoming expansions. Of course, with a video game like this with a big focus on thriving expansions and always being online, the DLC story content is to be expected, but I'm glad to say that the base game story was a much better one than the first one. Destiny 2 will feel and look very familiar to those of you that played the first game. It's sort of a good and a bad thing. Immediately just looking at the gameplay, yes, Destiny 2 very much looks like a very big DLC release. I'm definitely not denying that. But take a closer and deeper look and you'll find some newly added features, content, and most importantly, variety in the gameplay and things to do. The first Destiny had story missions with very little story context or explanation, and worst of all, when they did have level limits on the story missions, you had to replay old missions that were already pretty bland to begin with. This made the base game repetitive, with grinding feeling more like a chore than exciting character building. Destiny 2 changes a lot of this. The story starts with you pretty much losing everything, so sadly none of your power or ability progression from the previous game is transferred over. Luckily, Destiny 2 makes grinding more bearable and fun to do this time. The main game is broken up into four planet areas that act like mini open worlds or sandboxes. Each planet is filled with things to do, and this is really where the variety in the gameplay kicks in. You'll find your traditional story campaigns on these planets, and if you're simply just trying to rush through the story, you can completely do that for the most part. If you mainly rush through the story, you'll more than likely hit a level barrier that will require you to grind for a bit to level up your guardian before reaching the next planet or mission. Luckily, there's a lot to do on these planets, whether you're grinding to just continue on with the story or just mixing up things on your plate to do. There's adventure missions that oftentimes have you explore new parts of the planet, rewarding you with loot and other rewards. The thing I appreciated is that these adventure missions tend to fit within the game's lore, whether it's regarding the enemies or one of the side characters you meet on the planet. It gives more context and explanation to the mission, giving it meaning rather than I just going to play a mission so I can get a higher level and reach the next zone. There's also areas called Lost Sectors that are almost like mini hidden dungeons on these planets that eventually lead you towards mini bosses and rewarding loot chests too. Both of these types of missions take you towards the end of planets, so you never really feel like you're exploring the same old location from a previous story mission, but rather exploring new areas. On top of the mission content, the patrol zones on planets are decently large, so you're welcome to and encouraged to explore the areas, and at times you'll find yourself with other players online doing the same thing. This is where public events happen. 
Every few minutes you'll see a public event go on in the patrol zone, usually it's a ship of enemies dropping in an area or a mini boss just roaming through the planet. Regardless, this is your chance to team up with other players online on the same planet to grind up some XP, take out a boss, and get some cool loot in the process. Oftentimes, while heading towards my next story mission or in the middle of an adventure mission, I found myself getting attracted to these public events, helping out fellow guardians take out the strong enemy. This sometimes led to mini party sessions with these random players and ultimately some pretty fun social gameplay. Coming from someone that really likes to plug in a mic into their console, this was a pretty cool experience. This is all still just touching the surface of the gameplay, as there's vanguard missions and planning specific challenges that further opened up the variety of things to do. Sadly, matchmaking hasn't been implemented this time around, but Bungie did include a game plan feature inside the game to make it a bit easier to find other groups of players looking for specific missions. It's not automated, but at least it's there, I guess. Destiny 2 isn't entirely good though. You'll notice that a lot of the enemies in this game are recognizable and reuse assets from the first Destiny. While it makes sense that the old enemies would be in this game since it's in the same universe technically, I wish Destiny 2 didn't depend on them so much. Luckily they do get new moves and fighting techniques so they aren't carving copies of the old enemies in the first game, just visually looking. With that said, it definitely doesn't help with the perception from many people that hate Destiny already that this is just Destiny 1.5. Upgrading to new subclasses is also a bit random, it depends on finding a subclass relic in a chest. From there you charge it up by fighting until you get a special mission in your quest area. Complete that mission and then you'll unlock a new subclass. It made the entire process feel a bit random and odd. Another big thing altered in the sequel are vehicles. While you pretty much got a vehicle early on in the first Destiny, it's pretty rare in Destiny 2. Unless you earn a vehicle mid-game through an engram drop, you'll have to beat the story mode first to earn your own Sparrow. It definitely made the moment of getting one feel all the more satisfying, but damn the wait for it was pretty painful. Actually, speaking of engrams, let's talk about them because Destiny 2 has microtransactions in the form of these. An NPC in the farm area sells and decrypts bright engrams and these essentially function as loot boxes. When you level up past level 20, you'll earn a bright engram and you can also potentially earn them by leveling up faction levels with other NPCs. You can find things like emotes, sparrows, ships, and shaders in these engrams. However, if you want to take the easy route to getting them, you can pay the NPC in silver or bright dust. Silver is a currency you buy using real cash, and bright dust is a currency you earn from dismantling items inside the bright engrams. You can also only buy loot boxes with the silver currency, aka the real cash. If you want to buy specific emotes or cosmetic changes, you'll have to buy them using the bright dust that you eventually get from the bright engram, so either you find them or you buy them. All of this is only accessible when you reach level 20. Right now they don't seem entirely bad since you're not outright buying significantly better armor or weapons, it's more cosmetic stuff, but it definitely leaves the door open to a greedier route in the future potentially. In general, microtransactions don't really sit well with me, especially in a game like this that's already pushing people to buy future expansions. I'm happy that they're at least not incredibly important items, and as always if you don't want to support these business practices then I advise you to speak with your wallet and not buy them, and if you don't care about them then feel free to buy them or just play the game like I did and then earn them for free. Back from the original game are the PvP matches. This is where you can play 4v4 multiplayer matches with 5 game modes available on 8 maps. 9 maps if you're on PS4 at launch. The game modes consist of Clash aka Team Deathmatch, Control which has you capture 3 points on the map, Countdown, which is pretty much an altered search and destroy, Supremacy, which is kill confirmed from Call of Duty, and Survival, which is my personal favorite. Survival is a game of team deathmatch that gives the entire team 8 lives in total, so every time someone dies they lose a life from the total team count, making every death a crucial one. In general, if you've played any of the other popular first person shooters online, then you'll get the hang of this one pretty quickly. It's a lot of fun and I found myself going to it pretty often in between story missions. Destiny 2 looks absolutely beautiful. The things that really stood out the most to me in my playtime were the use of volumetric lighting. From the light leaks going through the spaces and buildings to the lens flares going down hallways, it perfectly gave the areas I was exploring some eerie yet cool atmosphere aesthetics. On console, Destiny 2 is capped at 30 frames per second, but the resolutions vary between the platforms. On PS4, the game runs at a native 1080p, while on PS4 Pro it runs at a dynamic resolution that's pretty close to 2160p. On Xbox One, the console is running a dynamic resolution targeting 1080p, but the game can get a bit softer than that when you have a lot of effects going on. It's pretty hard to notice most of the time though. 
Much like the visual presentation, the sound design and music is top notch. Weapons sound great and the sounds coming from enemies when they're defeated or when their shields drop are oddly satisfying mid-match. The thing I liked the most though was the way the music easily transitioned into a cutscene to perfectly fit the scene at hand. Even more were the moments when it happened during gameplay, even with the loud chaotic sounds of gunfire in the background. Good job Bungie, you guys nailed the sound design on this one. Destiny 2 is a definite improvement from Destiny 1's base game. There's more things to do, big areas to explore, and the story actually makes sense now. As someone who played the first base game and pretty much hated most of it, Destiny 2 has won me over. With that said, there's still room for improvement of course, like more new enemies to balance out the ones from the previous game and a matchmaking system to easily meet up with other players in your ranked area for strikes and raids. That'd be really great. However, there's no denying that Destiny 2's base game is a major improvement from the first. Likewise, there's no denying that you'll have to buy the expansions in the future to fully experience the story content. After all, this game borders an MMO and that's just part of the genre. With that said, I'm reviewing what we have at launch, the base game, and I'm for the most part pretty happy with what we have here. If you're on the same boat as me and you thought the original vanilla Destiny was boring and repetitive, you may want to take a second look at the sequel. And for those of you that stayed invested and were happy with your experience in the original Destiny with all the expansions, then there's plenty more for you to do in the sequel. That's my review of Destiny 2, of course I want to reiterate this is the base game and this game is going to change a lot within the next year so maybe I'll return and re-review it in a year's time when all the expansions are out, but this is my review of the base game and the game at launch, for those of you that are wondering what the game is like right now in September 2017. If you enjoyed this review and you'd like to see more content from me then please consider subscribing, I do reviews and general videos on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Thank you all very much for watching and keep on gaming.